Let's talk about cluster headache. So cluster headache is an idiopathic trigeminal autonomic cephalalgia. So there can be many autonomic symptoms. It consists of clusters of headaches with potentially long periods of remission in between clusters. Unlike other primary headaches, cluster headache affects mostly men with a 4 to 1 male to female ratio. Now the underlying cause is unknown, but it's thought to be due to a trigeminal hypothalamic pathway. For clinical features, there has to be at least five attacks of headache in the orbital, supraorbital, or temporal distribution. The attacks cause severe unilateral pain, so this is not a disorder that causes bilateral pain, although a caveat is that the pain does not always have to be on the same side. It can shift sides occasionally. The majority of attacks have to last between 15 minutes to 3 hours and the attacks will occur somewhere between once every other day to eight times a day, and that's for the majority of the cluster attack period. Unlike other headaches, such as migraines, cluster headaches can cause restlessness and agitation, and this is a good way to differentiate between migraine and cluster headache. Um, but not all cluster ha headaches have restlessness or agitation, and they are required to have either restlessness and agitation or autonomic symptoms, though. So the autonomic symptoms, they are ipsilateral to the headache, and they can include conjunctival injection or lacrimation, nasal congestion or runny nose, eyelid edema, facial sweating, and meiosis or ptosis. Cluster headaches can be further divided into episodic cluster headaches, which happen when the cluster periods happen three or more months apart, meaning there's a remission period for three or more months. There's also chronic cluster headaches, which occur if there is no remission period for a year, or if the remission periods are short, less than three months apart. For evaluation, an MRI brain with and without contrast is recommended, and this will help rule out causes of secondary cluster headache, so pathologies of the brain or pituitary gland. EEG and lumbar puncture are not recommended. For treatment, the first-line therapies for abortive treatment are oxygen and the triptans. So for oxygen, it's 12 to 15 liters per minute for 15 minutes. Now, the majority of patients with cluster headaches are cigarette smokers, and so caution in using oxygen in people with severe chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. For those patients, they may be offered uh, triptans, so subcutaneous sumatriptan, 3 milligrams or 6 milligrams, which can be repeated uh, two hours after the first dose. You want to try to give the first dose at the onset of the headache. Inhaled triptans can work as well, uh, but make sure to in inhale them through the contralateral nostril due to nasal congestion in the ipsilateral nostril. Second line agents can include lidocaine, ergots, and octreotide. For preventative treatment, verapamil is first line for episodic and chronic cluster headache. For higher doses of verapamil, an EKG is recommended due to the risk of heart block and bradycardia seen at higher doses. After verapamil is started, the benefit is seen at two to three weeks, and then verapamil can be gradually tapered down for episodic cluster headaches. While waiting for verapamil to work, you can also start glucocorticoids, and these can sometimes be, uh, you can see, short-term benefit. Other medications which can work include galcanizumab and lithium. For prognosis, patients with untreated cluster headache can often experience reduced quality of life and increased risk of depression. The clusters of headaches 
can last 6 to 12 weeks on average, and the periods between cluster attacks can happen uh, for months or years. Now, unfortunately, cluster headaches are typically seen as a lifelong disorder, and the cluster attacks only decline slightly with age.